be calling the special meeting to order. We, uh, we can please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and salute to the New Mexico State flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moving on to the next item of the agenda is approval of the special meeting agenda. Have we all had a chance to look at it? Mr. Mr. Chair, <laughs> I move that we approve the special meeting agenda. A second. Second by Commissioner Brown. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, next item will be a recognition of services for Abigail Burgess. Uh, you can come up here. This is a certificate in appreciation for your service and commitment to the citizens of Grant County, uh, County Attorney 2008 to 2019. And uh, do we have anything to say before? Yeah. Go ahead. So, County, <laughs> just like to say thank you so very much for your service to the county. We really appreciate it. Thank you for your 11 years of service. Yes. I thank you for the short time that I can give you. Thank you so very much for it. I already miss being able to pop in your office and, and whine at you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being a therapist. Thank you. A legal therapist. <laughs> She's a legal therapist. This is not a question and answer period. Speaker will be limited to five minutes. Any individual would like to discuss an item in more depth may request to be placed on a future agenda. Request one are available in the county manager's office. Do we have anyone for public input? Okay, seeing none, we can uh, move under uh, move on to resolution. Next item, resolution A, approve, disapprove resolution 19-51, fiscal year uh, 2019 final budget adjustment. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, to have resolution um, 19-51 to consider for adoption, this would be um, final adjustments to last year's um, fiscal year and I will go over the adjustments. Um, there's a transfer out in uh, the general fund, a total of $100,600. $100, and this is $25,600 to go into farm and range, and $75,000 into Cotica Minos 19 grant. Um, we didn't receive the funds in the farm and range department for last fiscal year until this fiscal year in July. 
So in order to not have a deficit balance, we had to do a temporary cash transfer. So when we received, we received the funds already, so what I'll do is I'll turn them into a cash transfer to put it back into the general fund. And, um, Hold and, on. Sorry. and in uh, Corre Caminos, um, that's also a temporary cash transfer, and that's for a cash flow since we haven't um, received the reimbursements yet for the end of the fiscal year for the months of um, May and June. So again, it's a temporary cash transfer. Once we receive those funds, I'll transfer it back into the general fund. Um, also in the general fund, um, there's an intra budget transfer, and I know there was a resolution for me to be able to do these, but since it's from the commissioner's fund, um, into the treasurers and into the general services department. I'm bringing it to you so that you can see what that transfer is. Um, it's in the part-time salaries at the treasurers for $7,225 and um, postage of $600 into general services. Um, that 7000 in the salaries is for um, that part-time position that was allowed for the treasurer to receive. Um, there's also a... Um, temporary uh, cash transfer of $63,342 um, in the Whiskey Creek Fire Department into the capital projects for the um, addition to the fire station. And again, this is uh, for a cash flow. Once we receive those um, reimbursements, they will go back into the Whiskey Creek Fire Department. Um, also in um, the fire departments, there's an increase to construction and rehab of $2,020 for the Santa Rita um, Fire Department, an increase of $27,453 in the end of debt fund for the safety net care pool, and um, the DWI grants a total of $19,053 in uh, expenses. And then um, in the uh, road special projects, $13,902 um, increase in expenses for um, road projects. Then in the um, the restorative justice grant, um, an additional $1,383 in um, expenses, and an increase in the um, general obligation bond debt service, um, an additional $100 in expenses for administrative fees, and an additional $118 in administrative fees for the um, home hold harmless gross receipts tax bond, and an additional $3,000 in uh, revenue for the uh, chipper um, rental for some repairs. Um, I'm sorry, not for repairs. We had to uh, budget uh, revenue in order to meet the expense um, increase from the last meeting for repairs to the chipper. Uh, so overall, um, in your cash transfers, of course, it's going to zero out. It's a $163,942. Um, an increase in revenue of $3,000, um, in expenses $64,029, and in the intra budget transfers of $7,825. Any questions? And I'm um, sorry, let me mention that all these that are um, doing the um, expense uh, increase in the expenses, they have that many available in the pool cash. Okay. The uh, numbers you've given us for end of year, so that we know what our starting balances are for coming year, are based on this being approved? Yes. So, Mr. Chair, I will move that we approve the resolution number R19-51. Second. Mr. Chair, the commissioner, do any discussion? No discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, moving on to be approved as approved resolution R-19-52, final quarter financial report ending June 30th, 2019. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, here's our final um, report for the fiscal year of 2018-2019 and I will go over those major funds which is the general, the road and the correction. Um, so in the general fund we started off with the $4,244,798 cash balance 
we received um, $14,246,250 in revenues. We had cash transfers out of $4,496,175.25 and expenditures of $9,276,943.99, leaving us with a balance of $4,717,929.17. In the uh, road fund, we started the fiscal year with a cash balance of $207,476. We had revenue of $1,062,560.15 and expenditures of $1,713,097.20 and transfers in of $804,089.25, leaving us with a cash balance of $361,028.20. In the um, correction fund, which is jail, jail detention, it's the second fund, um, second to the last on that page. We began with a cash balance of $386,075, uh, revenues of $885,824.50. We had transfers in of $1,839,711 and expenditures of $2,370,463.87, leaving us with a cash balance of $741,146.63. Um, would you like for me to go over any of these other funds or do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? And of course, in the um, additional pages that you have, it's all up. Summary by funds and in a detailed report. Uh, yeah, I've got a, a question. Are these uh, based on actual cash, not accrued expenses and revenues? It's just actual cash that we received. So when I look at the bottom line, we actually have ten million dollars more among all these different funds than we had at the start of the year. Um, that is correct because these numbers are not, um, they don't take into consideration the three twelfths that we have to set aside, but you are correct. And $10 million would probably the majority of that is coming from the um, revenue bonds of the union because it's included in, in here. This is what I haven't had time to look for. It's in our um, fund. It just transfers over to the next year? Yes. This just carries over on to the next fiscal year. In the GO bonds? Yes, it's in fund 401. Um, it's on the second page. Yeah, that's 301. I'm sorry, not 401, 301. Okay, yeah, that's seven and a half million of it. Thank you. You're welcome. I was having trouble figuring out where in the world that came from. Oh, we got all that money from. Bonus. Any other questions? as presented by Ms. Vasquez. Second. Second by Commissioner Edwards. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> Moving on to the next item. Uh, budget hearing. I can see. Discussion regarding the bank account and budget for fiscal year 2019-2020. You have in the notice agenda the um, entire budget, which includes all the funds from the fire departments, grants, debt service, the bonds, all the funds. Um, but you have a printed copy in front of you that's just including the um, major funds. So I will go over um, the major funds. 
Um, I gave you, um, I sent you an email uh, of the highlights, a narrative of the changes from the final budget to the preliminary. And um, in it, um, I mentioned that we have received additional uh, monies in property taxes, the delinquent taxes, um, the gross receipts tax, in PILT, and then we also have received a loss in copper. Um, so um, we ended up with a cash balance of about, of not about, but of $4,721,273. Um, we also were uh, $1.2 million below our budget on the expenses. We had 91.5% of um, expenses from our budgeted expenses in fiscal year 2019. Um, I will go over the highlights as far as um, the changes in the individual line items from the preliminary budget to the final. Um, in the commissioners, I increased professional services by $130,000. And what I did is I transferred the um, salaries and benefits for the um, attorney from the manager's department into the uh, professional, professional services in the commissioners. Um, I increased $2,500 in the training uh, line item of the treasurer's office uh, for staff to be able to attend uh, New Mexico EDGE classes. Um, I also increased IT by $60,000, and this is for um, to update the chart of accounts um, in our in-code tire system to coincide with the new chart of accounts that the Department of Finance is now using. Um, I also increased um, in the planning department uh, $15,000 for the um, code red service agreement, but I also budgeted $15,000 in revenue for this. Um, we have an MOU with um, the town of Service City, Hurley, Baird, and Santa Clara um, to be able to provide, uh, to pay for these services. Um, I also did a $47,500 transfer into the airport fund. And this is for um, to have a cash flow program that we will be uh, receiving to continue to do um, the project, the runway project at the airport, which is going to be done in stages. And um, these funds will be reimbursed next fiscal year, which is fiscal year um, 2021. Um, I did a cash transfer of $57,371 into the landfill fund um, to cover a shortfall that with the projections for this fiscal year, there would be a shortfall um, of revenues. And so in order to cover these, um, this shortfall, I had to transfer $57,000. Um, I also did a uh, cash transfer of uh, $64,873 into um, regional dispatch. And this is to be able to pay for the um, NMFA loan that they are uh, going to be receiving for the AutoCAD system. Of course, these are, I don't have actual numbers yet from the New Mexico Finance Authority, so I'm going to, if it's not necessary, this transfer will not go in um, at the end of the year. And again, the same thing with the landfill, if it's not necessary, they do, um, if their revenues do exceed the expenditures, these transfers will not be necessary, but I won't know until later on in the year. Um, I also um, put aside um, $315,000 into what's called an uh, unbudget, unbudgeted reserve uh, fund, which would be used for a potential um, salary increase according to the wishes of the Board of Commissioners as to what you decide what you want to do with the salary increases. But I did set aside $315,000. Um, so with all of this um, being done, it would leave us with a cash balance. Lost that word. Is that a caption? Oh, no, I have it right here. Um, it would leave us with a um, ending cash balance of $180,850. Um, well, I guess I should go back and let you know what the total budgeted revenues are for the fiscal year. So um, with this worksheet, you'll see that there was $4,729,273 in an unaudited beginning cash balance. Um, the revenues 
or $13,504,060. Budgeted transfers of $3,977,139.53. Sorry, Linda. Uh, where are you? Yeah, because... I'm looking at a recap. Stop with the final recommended budget. Uh, sorry, excluding law enforcement? Is that no, it's a final recommended budget um, worksheet that has the list of all the departments with the beginning cash balances, budgeted revenues, expenses. It's not one of the three that are on Nova's agenda? Yes. Yes, it's got the highlighted yellow sheet. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, the first, it's the first link. It's the first link. The first mm -hmm. Thank you. It doesn't say summary on mine. That's why I couldn't tell which one you were talking about. Okay. Um, okay, so it says recap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Okay. Thanks. We're with you. Okay. So the budgeted revenues are thirteen million five hundred four thousand sixty dollars. Um, budgeted transfers of three million nine hundred seventy-seven thousand one hundred thirty-nine dollars and fifty-three cents. Um, budget had expenditures of eleven million eight thousand two hundred seventy-five dollars, um, leaving us with an estimated ending cash balance of three million two hundred forty-seven thousand nine hundred and eighteen dollars. Um, and in there, you'll see that reserve for um, budget head expenses of three hundred fifteen thousand, and then the um, three cloth um, reserve requirement of two million seven hundred fifty-two thousand and sixty-nine dollars, which would leave us a cash balance of one hundred eighty thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. Linda, can I interrupt you for a moment? The reserve for unbudgeted expenses, does that show up anywhere on this? It doesn't. Um, okay. it, it does not. Um, I didn't do that because I'm not sure exactly which route we're going to be taking. Right. Um, so I haven't included it, included it yet. Okay. okay. Um, so um, in the road fund, well, you know, well, let's just stick to the general fund. Um, I also attached um, a worksheet um, with the um, commissioner's request. Um, I would like for you, um, when we do approve the budget, um, if you could make um, also a motion to approve whatever it is that you wish to do with these requests. Um, but with these requests, um, there is the $40,000 requested by Commissioner Edwards for uh, professional development which would be about $200 per employee um, for training um, or to attend classes. Um, the request by Commissioner Brown was a total of $22,000 for libraries, which there's already $10,000 included in this budget. Um, the breakdown would be $8,000 for the City of Bayard, $8,000 for the Town of Silver City, $4,000 for the Hilo Library, and $2,000 for the Rural Bookmobile. And uh, Commissioner Ponce is requesting 35000 uh, for the Baton Park to replace broken tiles um, at the Veterans Memorial Wall. And Commissioner Billings is requesting $20,000 for the DARE program. Um, if these are approved, then um, I did not get a request from um, uh, Commissioner Salas um, to put into here so he may you know later on come out with something if he wants to um, bring it up but with these requests it would be a additional one hundred and seven thousand dollars to the budget and um, so with the 312 reserve requirement on that it would be about one hundred thirty three thousand dollars so leaving us with a uh, surplus of about forty seven thousand one hundred dollars if these requests are all approved so, um, you said a reserve of that, but you mean an, an ending cash balance of that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so then I'm going to go on to the road department. In the road department, um, the beginning cash balance was $361,028. Budget check revenues of $1,021,000. Um, transfers of in to the road fund of $700,000. Um, expenditures of $1,859,115 um, with an estimated ending cash balance of $223,713 and the reserve requirement of $154,926 leaving a surplus of $68,787. In the um, correction fund, 
Um, there's an, uh, the beginning cash balance is $741,147, uh, budgeted revenue of $865,500, budgeted transfers into the correction fund of $1,800,000, uh, budgeted expenditures of $3,382,187, leaving an estimated ending cash balance of $24,460. And there is no reserve requirement um, for the detention center. Um, so this is our budget, and I've gone over the major funds, and I just went over changes from the preliminary. Of course, if you look at it, you might see an increase, maybe about $2,000 here and there, but that's going to be based off of actual expenses in fiscal year 18-19 um, that I felt that we needed to increase an individual line item. Um, I don't know if you want to discuss this individually, um, how you want me to take care of this um, as far as that goes. I didn't really understand the question. What it well, okay, so I just covered, you know, whatever major changes I made to the preliminary budget. So right. I don't know if you want me to go over each individual department um, because there might have been an increase, maybe of a couple thousand dollars in each department or a decrease, but this is based off of whatever actual occurred um, in fiscal year 1819. So uh, I don't know how you want to handle this or if you want me to move forward and talk about salaries and whatever other um, items you would like to talk about. Thank you very much. I don't have a need to go over the other funds. I'm actually still working on matching the general fund to what we had before. Okay. Uh, but you all can... No, I think I'm going to on that. Yeah, I don't need to go to the other one. Okay. Um, one of the requests um, that I also had in addition to um, working on bringing all the um, employees to the midpoint level of the uh, position classification and compensation study, um, again, like I said, that would be about $315,000 to, to, to Sorry, complete that. I'm going to have to get some hearing I'm going to have a hard time hearing you. Okay. Maybe I just want to get this. Okay. So um, one of the tasks that I was asked to do was to figure out how much it was going to cost the county to bring the employees um, up to the midpoint level of the position classification and compensation study. So that's that $315,000 that I mentioned that I um, put aside in the budget. Um, but in addition to that, I was also asked to uh, find out what the total cost would be for um, an increase in pay of 25 cents an hour for all employees. So the um, total salary and benefits to accomplish the 25 cents increase is $66,138. That's that 25 cents. Again, this does not include law enforcement. None of these figures that I'm giving you as far as the salaries include law enforcement. Could you repeat that $66,138? And that could be classified as my request. That's why I didn't have anything on this, on the other uh, additional request because that's part of what I want to propose. So I have a question. Um, I don't recall. Um, I don't recall any discussion about bringing all employees to the midpoint. That doesn't actually make any sense to me because we have employees who um, have been here for a long time that are at the midpoint. You know, we have employees that may have just started. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chair, we talked briefly about that in the preliminary budget, and when you were talking about the overall vision, and I said that was a starting place where we could start by looking at what it would cost the county to bring everyone who was not at the midpoint to the midpoint to bring it a little more equitable. Um, but how you choose to set that into place, or it was just a starting point, so we would know so kind of where it was. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, So 
So I think there's two pieces of discussion here. There's one about the 25 cent an hour thing, and then there's the other discussion about the $315,000. So I would just like to ask us to keep those two conversations separate. And then as long as we're on that topic, I have one question about the $315,000. So as long as it's – actually, I have two questions. So reserved for unbudgeted expenses, would we have the opportunity to come back and decide how that's going to be spent as a commission? Would we have – would we get to approve how that's going to be spent? No. Okay. And then the second thing is, is while we're figuring that out – and I have a lot to say about that at the appropriate point, which may not be now, but while we're figuring that out, will this be invested somewhere so that it's earning interest while it's sitting around waiting for us to spend it? Yes, it remains in full cash until such time that the commission decides what they want to do with it. Okay. So even if you don't make a decision until six months down the road or whenever it is, of course, you're only going to lose half of that. And then $315,500 by that time. No, it would be more like less. $160,000 or something. I was thinking about if we invested the $315,000. Oh, yeah. Got it. Mr. Chair, let me now bring my question in here. So there's $315,000 for potential, and that is going to be in the future. It might be six or seven months, right, before we can make a decision on that. No, we could do that today, too. Well, I thought – correct me if I'm wrong – I thought we were waiting for a final study to come in and say where we were in the job description. So this is worth discussing. We've had that final study. We are in a revision process. Yes, a revision. But I believe we'll be – that we will be doing on a very regular basis, I hope. It would be my hope that we would regularly review our compensation plan to make sure it's appropriate. So I'm not sure there will ever be a time when we can say, okay, we're set. We don't have to think about this anymore. I think we will always have to keep thinking about it. And we shouldn't wait for any revision to take an action that we want to take because we will always be waiting. Okay, but it was my understanding that, you know, as we discussed that we're going to wait on the review for this current one to make any adjustments for any jobs that might be out of line. That was not my understanding. That was clearly – that was my understanding as well. That's why it was going to take so long. I think what will happen – and this is something that is sort of those thorns in me – that there was a – the comprehensive plan was done, what, approximately two years ago? Two and a half years ago? It was adopted in April 2017. It was adopted in 2000. How much did we spend for that plan? About $60,000. We spent about $60,000 to do that plan. We're not even up to the midpoint or mid-level of that plan. And then we have another discussion that we're going to redo it again and take another six to eight months. That's the way I understood it. So I think that instead of – I mean, this is just my opinion as one of the commissioners – that we need to somehow start looking at the old plan and catching up with that plan. And if, you know, it is a wish of the board to wait another six to eight months to develop another one or increase it or do whatever, that is fine. But, you know, sitting back, spending all that money and having somebody come in and do these studies, and we're not – we haven't implemented it really. I think it – I think we need to discuss this. What can we do or how can we get our employees on a study that was done? And I'm assuming it was done for two purposes, for – to make sure that the job descriptions were in line, but also that we are taking care of the employees and giving them raises as the inflation goes up. So I think that that discussion should take place. I don't know if the discussion about the 25 cents 
should be right now. I think we need to keep them separate, but at least the discussion of, of the 315 as to what we need to do. Yeah, my, so my understanding is the same as yours, and my feeling about what we should do sounds like it's probably the same. When we adopted this compensation plan, we knew we didn't have the funds to actually implement it. We knew we were going to have to wait. And I guess because we've been on, the three of us have been on this commission for a while, that was in the back of my head the whole time, and I never told you that that was in the back of my head, that I've been waiting for a chance to implement that plan. Uh, and we've done well enough with budgeting and with revenues that now we can move forward on that. The fact that it was done two years ago, I don't think renders it obsolete at all. It's maybe obsolete in a few small areas that the revision will catch. But I don't think it wise to wait until that revision happens to try to implement what we've already done. It's still pretty recent. Uh, for Commissioner, uh, I'd like to move ahead. How would we, and please forgive me for my ignorance, but, but what are you proposing? Just going ahead and putting that that reserve that we're talking about and pushing it into salaries right now? I would support that. I, I don't know why we did the plan if it wasn't so that we could get our employees on that plan. Okay, and so we would see on average much more of a raise than what you're talking about. Now, it wouldn't be across the board because some people are already above midpoint. And what would, it would be uh, more fair? Would we then just visit uh, 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 a current review um, those jobs because I'm also under the impression that there's some jobs that don't really mesh with the descriptions that maybe there are in need of review how many there are I, I don't know but I know that there are some jobs that don't mesh, mesh with those descriptions so we would just adjust those as necessary that's how I see it and I think that process is going to be ongoing for years and I think we need to continue to look at it. Um, you know, the way I'm reading, the way I've read it here is, is uh, one budget of expenditure reserve of 315000 for potential salary increases and benefits as determined by the board. That's not what I was looking at. It says that this, would, this is what it would cost to bring our employees to midpoint level in the position. And I'm thinking that uh, maybe we're on the same page, but I'm thinking if we do this study, we spend this money, I think we owe it to our employees. And to look at it and bring them up to the mid level. I mean, once they're there, maybe we can uh, uh, down the road look at it a little bit, a little bit more and see where we're at or who's left out and, and so forth and so on. So I'm having a really hard time wrapping my head around this conversation. Um, so one of the things that, um, and, and I'm not disputing the salary study itself, and maybe I'm going to just say it out loud, maybe I don't understand clearly what we're talking about here. But um, we have a staff of 200 people that would have, some of them have been employed here for 30 days, and some of them have been employed here for 30 years. And if you're talking about bringing everyone up to the midpoint, then are we going to hire everybody that we hire in the future at the midpoint? That doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm just saying, it doesn't make any sense to me, and maybe I don't understand how this works. But what I do understand, I think, pretty clearly, is what the Sheriff's Department has done with the step plan. And um, it's my understanding that the way that works, and please correct me somebody if I'm wrong, it's my understanding that the way that works is that um, you have uh, steps that you uh, go through over the life of your career that give you raises, basically. And that what the Sheriff's Department is doing is, and what it's helping them with, uh, one thing in particular is that if somebody, if they have a, a step plan over 30 years, and somebody comes in with 10 years of experience, they can start them at the 10 year mark, correct? And so I did a little exercise on paper. So that to help me figure out uh, if I understood clearly how this works. And um, this step plan idea 
to me is the most fair way to everyone in the county to have in front of them something that aligns with the salary study. I'm sorry, I made exactly four copies. Should have made copies for everybody. Sorry. So the numbers in here are an example, obviously. But if we have, uh, and, and the way I'm doing this is it's over a period of 30 years until the midpoint in employment is 15 years. So if you start out at 20,000, and, and if in the salary study, uh, the maximum is 40,000, then, so the, the starting point is 20,000, the midpoint is 30,000, the end point is 40,000. Then it's, it's based on the number of years that you've been employed or the number of years of service, previous service that you had at, at a prior job that were an accountant's experience, right? So if we took the salary study that we did two years ago and we put every employee based on their time and service somewhere on that scale, so let's just say that somebody in the assessor's office that the starting salary is 40000 and the, uh, the top is 60000 you know, you would take their time and service and put them on that scale of years. Now we're going to find some people who are below that and some people that are above. And then we're going to find the people um, who have 30 years of uh, time in the county. There's a handful of people uh, in the county who are above 25 years of service that are still at the midpoint. So if in my mind, if what we really want to do, and, and I'm one of the things that I really want to talk about here, I want to talk about this in relation to, to, to taking care of our staff. I also want to talk about it in relation to some other things as well. But we need to have a long-term plan about this kind of stuff. We can't, we can't just make these decisions without understanding what the long-term impact of them are. And I really think that the beginning of trying to do that was doing the salary and compensation plan that we approved two years ago. So if we took that plan and we, if we adopted the idea of a um, uh, step plan and put people in that and then adjusted salaries according to that salary plan based on the time in service in their job, then that's what makes sense to me. Then, they would also be able to look forward to specific raises along that scale. Um, and in the example that I've created here, um, if, the, if the step plan is every three years, then the scale is $2,500 per year. And this would depend on the salary compensation study for each position. So the numbers I'm using here are just an example. But if you took the difference between the starting salary and the midpoint, and you divided that out over those three-year increments, then every three years the person would get, or we could do it every year in third amounts. But, and then take that $2,500, whatever that amount is, divided by three for the three-year step, and have a third of it be for time and service, a third of it be for professional development, and a third of it being evaluations. Now, it requires a bigger plan than to just say we're going to follow this plan and take everybody to the midpoint. It requires some thought about how we're going to compensate people who should be above the midpoint, people who are below the midpoint, etc. Um, I also want us to think very seriously about how we're going to provide professional development, etc. in the future. Now, the reason why I've, I've been thinking about this a lot, hopefully I haven't been thinking about it a lot wrongly, because I'm really going to be sad. But, you know, if we, the challenge that we have is that we have basically flat revenue. And if we spend $315,000 this year to raise everyone's salaries, then we have to have that in the budget every year going forward. Or we have to do one of two things. Lower 
the services that we're providing to the community through our taxpayers or lay people off. I would rather have a long-term plan on how we're going to manage this for the next, I don't know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years in a way that makes sense that we can budget for, that we can know what the budget is in the future, and that all of our um, employees can know what to expect instead of going through this every year and talking about, well, we may do this this year or that next year or whatever. And I agree with that. The only, the biggest thing to me and what's the scariest part is our employees, county employees. Is because every year you're depending or, or so many or different employees are, are uh, anticipating a raise that we might not be able to get. Those, those are the dangerous things with the step plans if we're going years of services. Now we know that we just took a two hundred, if I'm not mistaken, two hundred and thirty six thousand dollar hit with what some of our taxes are from from the mine. So do we give these employees false hope or do we turn around and say, okay, for, for now this three hundred and fifteen is good enough to get whatever the, the study said and get them to that point while we work out some other type of plan. Because the longer we take you know, we're going to go into three years, four years of this money that was spent in this comprehensive plan that was done in the study. So to me, sometimes when you get into your step plans, it, it can be a little dangerous because we may have a good year and we go to the next step with some employees. The next year, it may not be go very well. And what happens to the other employees that don't get their piece? Or do we make sacrifices and get them in a piece? And, and you're right. Some of those sacrifices could come into losing jobs uh, and maybe even cutting some of our services. So we have to be real, my, that's my opinion, we have to be real careful how we do it and what we do it. I, to me, I agree on percentage raises um, because if we get them to the midpoint and we do what this compensation plan was supposed to do, then we can take a step back and look at, well, what can we do and continue to do? Well, we could take the $315,000 and do exactly what I'm talking about with it. And what it would do is level, is, is put people in the appropriate places on the pay scale based on a step plan. Um, you know, your point about um, we may have a good year or a bad year is a very good one. And I think part of that plays into the fact that we have $315,000 this year, but if we don't have if we take another hit on tilt or another hit on copper production, then we may not be able to um, budget that $315,000 next year. And so it makes way more sense to me to have a long-term plan that we can actually build in goals around. Um, doing it this way, to me, is... It's, it's, it sets all of us up for failure because we can't give our employees um, a, a set idea of where they stand. Now, granted, it may mean that at the you know in a really bad year we'll have to say we can't do raises this year, but at least it gives us a tool to budget towards, and we can say you know we have an obligation to. Uh, so one of the things that it does is it gives us an idea ahead of time of what our obligation is to our staff for that year. So if we can figure out mathematically, if, if we start this, we can figure out mathematically that we are obligated in fiscal year 2022 to provide $100,000 in raises. And we can budget towards that. Uh, go ahead. Okay. I, I know Mr. Salas is also interested, but I, I now have three things. <laughs> and, and the one that's most urgent is about your last observation. Um, when we get to what I would call a steady state, because I'm a physicist by training, we won't see the kind of increased liability that you guys are talking about, where year to year you're going to have a liability for increase. Because when we're at a steady state, we will have as many people leaving as coming in new. And if the step plan is fully implemented, then the high paid folks leaving are offset by the low paid folks coming in. 
And unless you add a COLA to the formula, you're not baking in an annual increase. Okay, so, that, that's, so that's point one. Well, good, I'm glad that's fine. That means you shouldn't be afraid about the baked in increase part unless you add a COLA. And year to year, we can decide if we want a COLA or not. Right. Point two, to address, I thought, a very good point you made, Mr. Chair, about the fairness of giving a raise to some people one year and the next year not being able to. That argues, in my mind, for an annual step rather than an every three year step. In that case, everybody moves up a year that we can move them up, and nobody moves up a year that we can't move them up. So go with annual instead of every three years, and we eliminate that. And my third point, which was the first one that occurred to me chronologically, was that I need to apologize for confusing things. This is a case where I think human brains do this. I had this model in my mind of what the midpoint meant. And I've been through this, and I've had it explained to me, and apparently my brain didn't latch on properly, because I still thought midpoint was basically what you're talking about, that for every step that you've got laid out here, there's a midpoint. And I realize now, I've been corrected about this. That's not the case. And so I withdraw my idea that we should implement the plan by getting everybody to the midpoint. That was a faulty thought I had for a long time that I've got to get out of my head. I really like the idea of a step plan combined with the compensation plan to rationalize our staff salary. So thank you all for your patience. Well, I, think, I just want to say really quick that part of the reason why I don't want us to decide today how we're going to spend the $315,000 because I'm not the only one with ideas about this. And I think it bears some discussion and planning so that we can actually go to our staff in the future and say, we have a plan and this is what it looks like. So thank you for that. Those two things make total sense. And in fact, in my drawing, uh, an annual step would work. And to be my only thing is we did a study. Here we are, two and a half years. I don't know what happened. I haven't seen anything happen with that study other than we spent $60,000. Um, so whatever we decide to do, we need to do it, and we need to do it soon, whether it's, like you said, about the midpoint or if it's a step program. But something needs to be done for, for the county employees. You know, let's not take another two years and, and, and decide what, what's going on. We need to come up with plan. Everybody has what the, the plans out here over here. They're good ideas. My thing is, let's try to get it done as soon as we can. And that, that's how I feel, Commissioner Sons. Mr. Chair and Commissioners, I, I totally agree with the step plan and, and getting it implemented quickly. You know, uh, and, and as far as I and, and a lot of industry, they tie it to current year evaluations. And, and, and it, it, if, if there's a, a step increase every year, or for whatever it be, when they hit that, they know that something's coming. Okay. And, and, and any indignancy by our, our workers is, is, is well, we do nothing. Where they stay at the same point and we do nothing. But I, I think that it would really be great if there's a plan so that they know. So, hey, I'm going to strive to do good this year so I get a good eval so that can add to my uh, to my possibility of my raise on the step plan, you know. And then we literally define what they're going to be doing for professional development and stuff. I think the discussion that we ought to have year to year is whether we're going to be able to afford a COLA. So this is a good year. What can we do this year? But we also you know, need to think about the, the lean years and, and, and make it public what is the possibilities. So are we looking at, you know, reduction in services or uh, reduction in salaries? Because that has happened. That happened in the education department, you know. When, when the budgets did not, this did not justify or they could not support it, you know, teachers took cuts. You know, so now as it's going forward, they're, they're recouping. But we do need to have that discussion about, you know, what uh, what possibilities there are when that situation comes along. So one thing I'd like to bring up um, is that 
I did a, a tiny bit of research on colas also in anticipation of this conversation. And um, there are some, uh, a lot of different ways of thinking about colas. And so I would just like to ask that, that um, so really what I envisioned um, when, when I was thinking about all this and putting all my thoughts together and everything was um, giving uh, the um, staff a six month deadline to have uh, a plan that we could approve um, uh, on how we're going to spend this $315,000 to do a step plan and, you know, all this sort of stuff. And, and maybe at that time, what we could also do is discuss how we're going to do a COLA as well. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to, um, if, if the cost of giving everyone a point, so the, the cost $66,138 to give everybody a 25 cent an hour raise, is that per pay period? Is that per year? Per year. Per year. It would cost us 66000 So, So one thing that occurs to me is that maybe what we could do is give everybody a 25 cent an hour raise now and um, set a deadline on when we're going to, and maybe it comes out with the $315,000. Set a deadline as to when we're going to have the um, updated because we are uh, we made a commitment to county staff to uh, review and update the salary and compensation plan every two years. We're a little over that at this point, but we need to do that. And so, um, reviewing and updating the salary and compensation plan, figuring out um, the step plan idea and figuring out how we want to do COLA. But one of the things that um, um, has been a source of contention with people around COLA is that um, it does cause um, a situation in some cases where people who are doing similar jobs, salaries are just getting farther and farther apart because it's down on a percentage. And so I really, more than anything, what I want to do is compensate our employees fairly within the constraints of a flat, flat revenue. And so I really, and, and I have a long-term plan on how to do it. Um, and so I, I just really want to encourage us to figure out a way to have a long-term plan and do something now. That's what comes to my mind. Is, but I'm open to see you know, my thing is being fair and consistent as far as support our raises, right? Now, do we have six months to come up with this plan? I don't know. But your idea as far as um, maybe doing something with that comes out of the 315 right now, I like that idea to figure out what we need to do. Is, is that something that I know the, the, the Sheriff's Department did that? And they did that in house. So is that something that we could task our own, you know, to do in house and, and figure out a, a step time? Because the way that you have it, and which is a very good thing about the time of service, the professional development, and then the evals. Okay. Because do we have yearly evals right now for employees? Not consistent. No. So I, I think that's another uh, piece of that that there should be yearly emails. And that's, that's really what I would like to have at the end of the six months is, um, is an HR plan. And I think one of the things that I just want to say about that is that um, I think that what we're asking is a lot. Um, uh, in the future, I, need, I think we need to think about how much we're asking uh, our one-person HR department to do uh, in order to um, work on all of these things around, um, you know, evals and all that kind of stuff. But I really feel very strongly that we need to have a long-term plan on how we're going to take care of our employees, and it includes all of these things that we're talking about.
if, if we turn into the evaluation, it's going to be basically a pay for performance type plan. Is that where I was going? Go ahead, yeah. Mr. Strong. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I was just going to say, when we get to the point where we're discussing this, I just wanted to give you a, a heads up. I will oppose tying salary to the performance evaluation. I think it's a recipe for more trouble than we want. I believe strongly we should have any performance evaluations. But I believe those should go in the question, to answer the question, should this employee be employed by us or not, right? If they're unsatisfactory, they don't respond to professional improvement plans, then we need to let them go. But I do not like the power to give supervisors that can be abused when the performance evaluation ties directly to salary. And I'm totally open to discussion. That's where I was going to The evaluation should be, you know, Taking a look at the employees, he doing what is required, is he learning what is required, what do we do to develop them, what do we do to get them to the next step. Um, you know, if, if we go on that pay for performance in, you know, whether it be HR, county manager, somebody open up their door for some discussion and explaining and having those hard conversations is why you can get that. There's a lot more than, than, than kind of evaluation up to that, but. Um, totally up to that discussion. Yeah. Which is, which is a, a very good point. But I think we have to have that. Yes. We have yeah. to have, not the discussion, well, the we discussion, but we have to have the evaluation. Right. The other thing I feel really strongly about is we have to have professional development plans. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we just, we have, this is, you know, to me, working for the county, um, is one of the best jobs in the county. We pay 100% benefits. Uh, I don't think we pay, uh, you know, super well, but we pay pretty well. And um, uh, I want to take care of people, and I think it should be a place that people aspire to work, not sign up knowing that it's the only place in town. Does that make sense? Go ahead. I have a question for Linda or Charlene. Uh, we've had discussion about the fiscal impact of different percentage raises. Uh, I heard the chair indicate he favors percentage raises, and I do as well. Do you have an estimate for what, say, a 1% raise would cost? And of course, that involves the benefits that go up as well. It would be the 68 has four, right? The 68, unfortunately, was 25 cents per hour, not 0.25%. And I think we had done that. Otherwise, you'd be right. I can't remember, but we have 5,473,000 total salaries and benefits. 5.4 million? It, oh. <laughs> okay. Um, the total salary benefits, according to that, sheet that I'm giving you is 5,473,448. So what 1% of that is 5.7? Um, yeah. I get 54730 Yeah. Which I had estimated in the neighborhood of 55000 Wow. Beautiful. Good estimate. So, so 1% is slightly less than 25 cents an hour in total impact. Okay. So, so, what about the fact that, so I don't Blah, 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 blah. Are you about to get into the question of proportions versus absolutes? Probably. Because <laughs> let, let, let me just ask the question just to make sure that, that I'm thinking about it. So, um, so, so we have two things on the table. Um, we have uh, putting all county employees in an appropriate place on a step plan. And we have um, uh, uh, conversation about whether we're going to give a proportional raise or an absolute raise now. Or any raise. Basically. Or any raise. And um, as I said earlier, one of the things that concerns me about percentage raises is that it takes people farther and farther apart. In an absolute so, sense. So to help me understand here, does it does it make sense to do a twenty five cent an hour raise and a percentage later when everybody's actually in a line on here? 
Because then it makes more sense to me that people are getting further apart when you actually have them on here in the right place. But my sense is that some people are farther apart not due to um, due to sloppy hiring practices, I guess is what I want to say. And I, I, okay, well, so I'll, I'll give my pitch. I've got two pitches about proportions versus absolutes. In, I guess you know, I want to preface it by saying it's just not that big a deal. I'd probably be happy either way, uh, as long as it's a one-time thing. But, okay, pitch number one is you said people get farther and farther apart when you go back to portion. But that's not true, unless your mindset is absolute, not proportional. They get farther and farther apart, absolutely, but they stay exactly the same proportionally, which is the beauty of it. If you give absolute raises, 25 cents an hour, $2 an hour, whatever it is, they get closer and closer together when your viewpoint is, as mine is, proportional. And you end up having people with much higher skills, much higher education, more responsibility, not having the gap that rewards them for what they invested in their jobs that they should have. So that's why my brain thinks proportionally. The second reason my brain thinks proportionally is if we're talking about 1%, we are basically talking about a quote, right? Cost of living has gone up more than 1%, in fact, over the last year. Cost of living doesn't occur in an absolute sense. It's a proportional thing, right? It goes up by 2.5% or whatever the, the number is based on an average person's basket of spending. If that happened in an absolute way, that all of a sudden it cost you a dollar more to live and it, and it cost every other person a dollar more to live, then I would understand the rationale for giving an absolute raise. But that's not how inflation happens. So those are my two pitches. All right. Well, then, when you look at, I mean, town of Silver City, they, they, they brought up their employees, but a lot of it was, and this is just an example, 3% raise per year, 1.5 in July, 1.5 in December. Eventually, that adds up and you continue to grow, and that's why I like more of the percentage rate. Um, to me, I mean, I like that idea. I think that idea would be great if, if we came up with, okay, a 10-year employee is going to get, for example, $2 an hour. A 11-year employee is going to get two, uh, whatever. whatever. And then once we're there, I think that will Actually, be Actually, Harry's explanation did me just fine. I'm off, I'm off the well, 25 cents. <laughs> My, one of the things that I would like to see, and, and, and this is where the 25 cents and everything came out, you know, if we did something right now, and maybe it's a one-time deal till we got everything straightened out. So the 25 cents an hour would just be raising the bar by 25 cents for everybody. And then from there, we can definitely put out, this is exactly how things are going to work. And maybe we need to work on some kind of a formula or something that we use to figure out what a COLA would be. But then again, with the knowledge that a COLA is going to be whatever the budget can bear. Right. So, uh, but I definitely, I definitely agree. I, I'm, I'm even on board with the percentage. Okay, because it, 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 you know, I, I can, I can make arguments for both, and I think they're both good arguments. But I'm on board with the percentage. What I wanted to do in this meeting is have something definite, and we can do the 25 cents without dipping into the $315,000 reserve by doing a, a couple of things. Okay, so that when we need, so depending on what comes out of our step plan, you know, do we have that? So will we have to add to that, or would we have a surplus? That's, that's what we would have to figure out. But if we could leave that reserve alone right now and uh, garner the, uh, what is it, 66000 from other sources. Excuse me, um, Mr. Sellers. If the board does decide to approve um, all the requests that the commissioners have as requested, we would only have $47,000. So we would have to tap into the 315000 or some other line well, items to be able to meet that 66 Well, uh, I, I, maybe this is the appropriate place to to uh, mention this. You know, I would rather put our 25000 that we give uh, the MNMU for the golf course into 
raises for our, our employees. I would rather uh, dip in and then bid to our 300 and some thousand emergency fund to provide something for the employees. Because going forward, then we can we can really plan specifically for what we're going to need. Just as Commissioner Brown says, then we will know. We will know, and it will be more in line. It will be more towards the lower end than, than the upper, because there will be people leaving and new people coming up. And then the employees will know, because they probably will put it in our handbook, this is what our, our, our salary ranges are. These are how we're going to do it. <coughs> and, you know, uh, not tying it to, uh, to evaluations, you know, because I've been on that end, because evaluations can be very subjective, you know, and be a good thing, you know, but just knowing that there's going to be uh, that raise there. So, um, you know, when it comes time, you know, I'm going to move that we don't participate with uh, WNME, and then because as you've read recently, you know, I think they're pretty flush with cash right now. So do they absolutely need our our twenty five thousand dollars to survive? I don't think so. I think that that our employees need it more than they do. I wonder if it would make sense so that we can do this issue by issue to to reach some conclusion. It would be a tentative conclusion about what we want to do with salaries, uh, and then and then let's go to the other points because uh, I'm not sure I can enter the discussion. Okay, so specifically to the golf course. Would it be appropriate to make a motion right now as to what, you know, if I made a, uh, if we just go ahead and make the motion that we uh, we do a 25 cent uh, an hour increase to our employees, and then we review our salary schedules to include a step plan and uh, some kind of uh, process for a, a COVID evaluation. Uh, Mr. Spells, Mr. Chair, um, so just so I get it right, a 1% raise would be about $55,000, and uh, the 25 cent would be 67000 is that what? Yes. So it's just a matter of deciding maybe 1%. So 1% is pretty close to 25 cents. It's pretty close. And in, in both of those figures, I think assume we're going to add something on. Like we're talking about at most six months to adopt a step plan that as long as the union goes along with it, we we'll probably add to that amount right yes. for the year. Yes. So I, I'm thinking of it as a sort of an interim measure. Yes. Mr. Chair, with, um, so I've been pretty quiet. I, I guess um, I'd like to hear with all the discussion that's taking place, what uh, the county manager has to say, if anything, for, uh, and then um, have just a little bit further discussion. Do you have anything to say? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, um, I would agree that taking care of the staff needs to be first and foremost on our list. Um, you know, we started with nothing. We, um, we had no no plan, no salary range. Um, the start was um, implementing the compensation plan, knowing that it would take several years to fully implement. Um, you know, it, it's ultimately your decision how you choose to do this, and uh, we'll do our best to meet, make sure um, your, your wishes. Um, but I would agree we, we have to take care of our staff because without our staff, The only thing I want with the step plan is I don't want to give our employees a false hope. I mean, if we're going to jump into a step plan, we need a plan, we need to look at it, and we know the revenues aren't always, or at least our, or the employees understand, because they do deserve something along with with this using the 25 cents right now or the 66, 138 for that. I just don't want to get us into somewhere where we can't continue, you know, this comprehensive plan was there for a reason. It, it didn't come, come to through for our employees, so I, I don't want to see that happen again. You know, if we, if we say we're going to do something, we need to do our darndest, and hopefully other commissioners down the road also look at it that way and, and do their darndest to do it. So, did we not get a call last year? Did one and a half, right? Yes, we did. 
So I don't think we've done nothing since that study was done, just for the record. Um, Mr. Sullivan? Well, and the other thing we did with relationship to that study, because the call was independent of the study, we did make sure everybody was brought up at least to the minimum. So, you know, I, to me, that was the most important of the steps. Okay. We did think what we could with the money we had at the time. Mr. Salas? Yes, sir. Um, you have a motion on the floor that I would like to have a little bit more details into. Um, uh, but I don't remember what your motion is. <laughs> right. My motion would be to. My motion would be to give a 25 cents an hour raise right now for already employed. And then from that point, we would enter into uh, uh, looking at a step plan uh, for all employees and uh, a process for COLA. So, um, um, thank you for reminding me of that. And the things that I would think um, uh, need to be added to that motion are the six month deadline. Um, for the plan, and the plan includes um, evaluations, um, not evaluations tied to salary, but evaluations of plan for every employee to be evaluated every year, and um, a professional development plan. And totally agree that that should be part of our step plan. Okay, so we have a motion. On the floor, if I understand it correctly, 25 cent for all employees. All our, our uh, employees? No, I, I don't want to, at this point, include any of uh, uh, the supervisor personnel, our department heads, and things of that nature, our, our elected officials, our top elected. Uh, if we need to look at that, I think we should look at that separately. And Linda, your estimate was based on hourly employees, correct? It included everyone except. It included everyone except law enforcement, elected officials, and chief deputies. So it did include directors. How do you measure do you Okay, because they are paid on an hourly basis that they can actually absorb 20 cents an hour can be calculated? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can calculate the 25 cents an hour into that end. Well, even that pool is not going to make much of a difference in the in, in the bottom line of the month. Just and the reason I didn't clear. include uh, the sheriff's department is because they had already worked on a step plan. Correct. So um, I would like to um, advocate for us taking that, that increase out of the $315,000 since what we've set that aside for is increases for this year. And that is Wow, I don't even like that. Okay, so can somebody tell me the most? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me repeat the most. <laughs> For 25 cents an hour. <laughs> Serving commissioners, there's a motion on the floor. We don't have a second yet. Um, for the 25 cent raise for all hourly employees, a step plan, process for the COLA, six month deadline, um, evaluation to be added on that, and then the professional program. Some, some items in there are pretty vague. Would you object, Commissioner Edwards, if we just stuck to the hourly for this motion and then you can make another motion that specifies what you want with the plan? Thank you. So can you amend the motion back to me? Just the 25, right? 25 cents? Can you amend the motion? Well, I think that would be I have, pretty. I have a clarifying question then. Sure. So Marisa said hourly employees we're talking about, department heads, who are we giving the raise to? So we should give it to everyone Everybody except, except elected officials, law enforcement, and chief deputies. deputies. And the chief deputies are appointed positions which are governed by a resolution that was adopted, which is not to exceed 95% of the elected officials out. We have two more. We have two more appointed officials that is differentiated in the um, comp plan, and the other two appointed officials are myself and the executive secretary to the show. Although those are calculated. 
in two of the 25 cents. Oh, in the 25 cents they are, but not the other, right? Correct, correct. Only into the 25 cents, they're calculated into the 25 cents, but not calculated into the 315, which is at the midpoint. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. Okay. I'm guessing the motion should just say excluding uh, elected officials, uh, <coughs> chief deputies, and appointed law, law enforcement, and appointed positions so that we're clear. Yes. Because I don't know why there'd be some appointed and some not appointed included in it. Does that make sense that that's more excluding? That's very good work. So there's four categories of people. So should we try this one more time? So, so can, you, can you read it back? So there's a motion on the floor for a 25 cent raise for everyone excluding elected officials, chief deputies, law enforcement, and appointed officials. So you have four categories. I'm good. Mm -hmm. We need a second, so I'll second that, I guess. Any further discussion on this? I guess I would like to know if the argument about proportion versus absolute made sense to folks, and in the future, We'll be thinking more about proportions. Well, well, that's what I was going to ask. Her. Was the consensus of the commission to go with one percent or the point two five? My preference is still a percentage, but I also said that I didn't. It wasn't that important to me, so I would go with the consensus of the others. So, for right now, the motion wasn't twenty five cents, right? Mm -hmm. And then we did look it down the road. So. What's your feeling about it? Yeah, I, I guess it's not the end of the world either way. I mean, it's a few thousand dollars or whatnot. I would tend to go with the 1% from what the discussion I've listened to. But is there a reason? What's the listen? Because I think that a, a, a quarter shows that we're working in good faith right now. We really want to to do right by employees and the county, and this is, this is a one-shot deal. We're, this is not anything that's going to be repetitive. We're going to do this right now as we can figure out um, going forward, you know, our step plan. But as far as the, the 0.25 versus the 1%? Because it, it's, it's equal to everybody. It's equal okay. to everybody. The, the, the person making, you know, $15 an hour is going to get a bigger percentage than that person making $20 an hour. But moving forward, I can certainly understand Commissioner Brown's argument of, uh, of proportion because that person on the upper end has certainly strived to get there. So, you know, it should be a little bit more meaningful, so, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> well, I think this would be a start at some point. Any other discussion? There's still some considering going on, but I'm done. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm just trying to figure it. So basically, with 0.25, your employees who make less are going to get more raise than. Yeah. To get more of a percentage raise. More of a percentage raise, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Any further discussion? Okay, see no further discussion. All those in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Motion carries. Do you want to propose another motion about the future of the compensation plan? Yes. Is that appropriate? Oh, that's a good question. We don't really... It's not on the agenda. It's not really on the agenda. So, because it is tied to the budget, though. Perhaps we could express the will of the commission without it being a formal motion. I think you're hearing that the commission is interested in seeing the staff, me and you, produce uh, a step plan uh, related to cost estimates. Copious notes. <laughs> yeah. And that we would like to see that within six months at the very most. Is that reasonable, Charlie? Oh Am I forgetting? There is something about professional development as well. Mm -hmm. Professional development. Professional development and in the, the comprehensive 
compensation plan based on steps, professional development, and evaluation. So I, do, I would like for you to clarify the uh, professional development plan. Um, that obviously I really needs to come from the respective elected official department head. What does that consist of? Um, explain to me exactly how you want that tied into a step plan. Because I'm not, I, I mean, I see professional development, I see salary, and how are you tying? I just need you to clarify for me how you want me to tie professional development plan into a step plan. Well, I think. I think the step plan, the professional development plan, and the evaluation plan are all pieces of a compensation plan going forward. Even if they're not specifically tied to salary? Right. It's almost like it's well, not it's really not called a compensation. compensation plan. That would be like a human resources plan. Human resources plan. Human resources plan. That makes more sense. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Um, the other thing that I would like to be included in that, don't kick me under the table here, is uh, it's a, it's a it is, it is get you. reason for that, um, a recognition plan, some kind of basic record. Oh, process for COLA. Thank you. So I just want to read back my notes just to make sure that I understand so that I understand your direction very clearly and this is what you want me to move forward with and it's not going to change. Um, so a step plan um, based on what you've described, um, a process for a colon, an evaluation procedure, professional development plan, and a basic employee recognition program. So I have Yes, well, being that the commission did take a vote, I don't mind those ideas being explored. Thank you. But before we proceed with anything, I'd like feedback on what's practical, what's not, why we can't do all four, why we should, we should do all four and double down on it, or whatever. So I think we need a lot more discussion. Absolutely, and that's why I asked the question at the beginning if we would get to have this discussion before the $315,000 was spent, because I think this this whole thing, I think, could easily require another special meeting just to discuss what, you know, how we're going to move forward. So, no, we're doing two a month meetings, but it's especially. Well, a, a lot of time to think about because I do agree with um, Mr. Billings. I think there's going to be a lot of different opinions about how we should go forward and, and a lot of different ideas. And I think it's what I want is a plan that we all agree on that is a long term thing that our employees can count on. There is some good discussion here, and I would just like to follow up. There's in my mind, there's not been enough from the professional we hired her to run the county. I'd like to visit with her personally as she's had some fun to process this and think about it and say, well, this is, you know, I can, I can envision her telling me in her office, this is why I think this is good, this is why this is not, and then we're relying on what to do that. I think the other part to this is we're going to have to find heads for reasons, <clears throat> and I think they're important. Should uh, should be uh, I, I I really want you know, and not only department heads of like the official because they've not always been employed in there. Um, I think their input into this is, is just as important for this process. And, and I think if anyone and, and I don't mean it in a bad way, but can't say this, but you know somebody that's that's their supervisor, I think sees that employee more often and, and works with that employee more often and, and they understand more of a developmental plan or, or anything like that or, or what they would like to see as far as pay. So I like to see their input also. And see, the, what I, I feel is going to be uh, the more subjective things, it's going to be harder to determine and put down in black and white is going to be the professional development because, you know, is that what's going to be wanted by the, the director, the employee, the county as a whole. But so that that's a, a good discussion there. And then the, the evaluation. I think it should be something standardized. You know, that, that just as the uh, chairman uh, 
what's the saying there that all uh, all department heads have that input so that one good solid you know document can be produced? Well, clearly it's going to be more expensive to do professional development for um, you know the finance director than it is for a laborer. Sure. But I think we need to figure out you know how can we. You know, if that laborer wants to advance in their job, then what would the bank do to do that? Well, because I see, like in the assessor's office, there's opportunities there to get education. So, what are the opportunities going to be for the laborers, you know, for the mechanics, for the truck drivers? You know, what are we going to be doing for them? And in that, in that venue, you know, what do they want? That's where the department heads come from. Yes, that's looking at some of our budget and, and, and looking at it. I know that some departments, and correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, I can see the world department have no training budget. Uh, IT have no training budget. Uh, there's departments that didn't have a training budget in there that, uh, you know, whether it be, you know, training them, whatever diversity, whatever training, development on their tools. I think those are the things we really need to pay attention to. to. Why you take that out of your personal? It's also why I'm proposing. There you go. That's what I said. And it just said it's you know 200 per employee. It may not turn out that way, but um, it's an average. So what I like to do is, I mean, can you tell me if since we're discussing regarding this this budget. Um, do I go ahead and do the, go to the commissioner's report or the um, commissioner's request? Um, before we do that, um, I had a couple of questions on Linda's narrative. Can you do Yeah, I still have one. About your okay. general fund also. So, um, Linda, will you please uh, explain a little bit more about the $60,000 in IT for updated chart accounts? Yes. Um, currently, the um, chart of accounts that are in the ENCODE system uh, don't coincide with what um, the local government division, um, they adopted these um, chart of accounts last year. So right now, as I work with the budget or quarter reports or anything, I'm doing actually like three sets of workbooks. Um, one internally for myself so I can separate. Um, I have sub-funds within a fund or a sub-department within a fund, so I keep my own separate to know what the cash balances are within like, for example, grants, okay? And then I have the ones that are in here entirely, which are combined together as one fund. And then there's the one that goes to local government division, which is totally separate chart of accounts. Don't even go with the so funds that I have. The account numbers, et cetera, no more. Correct. So I just want them all to mash together so that it's very clear to everyone who looks at it that they have a clear picture. What line so, is so I understand that part. Where is the $60,000 going? Is that going to Angela to fix it? Is it going to the local government division it, to fix it? Where is it going? To Tyler Technologies. There are software, um, they're the ones that handle our software packages, so they will do an update to our system, and then we'll have to pay um, a maintenance fee on it. So it goes to Tyler Technologies. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the cash transfer of $57,000 into the landfill fund, um, that is um, uh, the revenue, there's a projected revenue shortage and you said that if the revenue isn't really short, but where is the revenue coming from on that landfill fund? That comes from the landfill um, fees that are charged to um, all the residents that are outside of the municipality and it's um, five dollars a month that they pay and then the landfill turns around and charges the county for taking fees but we are um, not bringing enough revenue um, to cover that expense from the landfill and in addition to that we also use the um, environmental gross receipts tax also so between the environmental gross receipts tax and the landfill fees that we are collecting we're still going to be short about fifty seven thousand dollars 
your attention. I just have one thing to that. I just want to bring to your attention that um, I have started looking at that ordinance. That ordinance was written in 1998 and has not been changed since then. What is the structure? The structure, and there's a lot of other things in there that we don't do. Um, so there is some assistance we could um, receive through the Environment Department, so we'll be looking at that. And um, one of the main reasons for the shortfall is our tipping fees increased this year. Um, Solid Waste Authority went through an asset management plan and um, took, uh, they did an analysis of all of their fees. So um, those are going up so that they can cover their costs. And I think we need to do the same thing. We need to be able to generate enough revenue to, uh, to cover our costs. We'll be looking at that in the next few months. And if I'm going to add a note while you're looking at that, uh, if you would examine again or let us examine again the question of whether that is a use fee or a tax, I would appreciate it. To me, it meets all the definitions of a tax, and yet it was decided in 98 that it was a fee, and therefore that gross receipts tax should be collected on it. So every single time I pay it, I'm paying a tax and then a tax on the tax. And... Uh, uh, we should not do that. It's, it's to me, clearly a tax. So just add that to the list of things to reconsider. Thank you. And so uh, when you say our tipping fees, do you mean the actual county's use of the landfill or county residents' use of the landfill? It's county residents' use. It's county residents' use of the, so we're responsible for different transfer stations throughout um, the county facility. Right, right. so like the, the stuff that they pick up and collect, they're right. charging a tip and you know, they don't know the land and they don't Yes. Okay. Right. Thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, The other thing I wanted to know about was the, the cash transfer decrease of $40,000 into the correction fund and into the road fund. So I, I just want to clarify what I think I know just to make sure. So, um, so there are certain things, there are certain revenue sources that come into the general fund. And we use general fund uh, money to make up shortfalls like at the detention center or wherever else whatever if whatever revenue they have coming in doesn't cover their expenses we use general fund dollars to cover that right okay thank you okay. so i have one question to add to that uh, on the revenue side the transfer in amount dropped from 146000 to a little less than 26000 Can you explain that? I guess it, yes, um, Commissioner Brown, you're talking about the general fund, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, because that $95,000, those are all um, temporary. Yeah, if you recall, like, through, um, out the year, we do temporary cash transfers. No, let, let me... Let me let everybody see what I'm talking about. Uh, if you have the hard copy of the budget comparison report, uh, the first section is all revenue, right? It goes down to the second page, about the middle. And the very last line, which isn't really revenue, by the way, but for that fund, it's kind of revenue because money's coming into that fund from other funds. Uh, it now says 25.6. And what it said in the prior version was 146,000. So that that's the difference I'm asking about. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, that 146,000 dollars would have been, like, and like I said, it was like for temporary um, cash transfers that we have done um, throughout the years. And so what I have to do is I budget it back. But there's, I think there was, I have to look exactly which fund it was. But we had already done the transfer within the fiscal year. So therefore, there was a reduction in it. And this time, the only transfer that I'm showing in there is the one for the um, farming range. Um, by that, what I didn't do was include that 75000 that we just did um, for uh, Puerto Caminos. I didn't include it into this 25600 
Um, we're definitely doing an adjustment for it, probably sometime in November or December, when the federal fiscal year closes and Puerto Cabinas has received all reimbursement. Okay, so there's some future revenue that's not accounted for here? Correct. Okay, that's helpful. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. I'm ready to move on. Uh, thank you. Anything else from the... Yes, Mr. Chairman, what I would like is for, as you were going forward with the commissioner's request, um, so that I can have clarification on that as to what the board wishes for me to do on these individual items. And also, if you could make a motion on um, the 25 cent increase rate, $66,000, if that's going to come out of the 315000 if I understood that correctly, if you can make a motion on that, along with these requests, so that I know what direction to take. Okay, so we start with that one just because I think we're all thinking it already happened? Yeah. I would like to make a motion that the 25 cents per hour raise that was authorized earlier this meeting uh, come out of the $315,000 reserve for raises that uh, the fiscal director has included in our budget. Second. 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 Okay, all those in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Motion carries. So now you want us to do each one of these commissioner requests, correct? We'll, we'll go back and just do one and do it that way. So actually, um, what I would like to do is I'm going to withdraw my request for the professional development. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, pending um, the plan that uh, the county manager and um, staff will come up with, um, I'm just going to withdraw that for now. Um, Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. That sounds good. Yeah. Since mine's next on the list, I, and I'm not suggesting necessarily vote on them one by one, but I just want to note that it looks like 22000 but it's really only a $12,000 increase Correct. from what was proposed in the budget. Uh, because the city of Bear was already in there, already and the bookmobile was already in there. So, so I just wanted to make it fair to the other libraries, and my concept of fair uh, is reflected there, 8000 for Silver City, 4000 for Gila, uh, based on my understanding of their size and needs and services to county residents. Thanks for including the Gila Library. We didn't. We have that request for about two years from now. I think uh, you have a written request for 4000 in, right, from the library? Okay. So, so, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, 20000 $22,000 budget adjustment for libraries. The adjustment is only $12,000. I mean, excuse me, $12,000. I have it right here. It's right there. $12,000 adjustment. I'll second that. That's for the whole package of the commissioner's request? Yes. No, it's just, just the library. library. Okay, just the library. So we have a motion for by Commissioner Brown? Present. And for by Commissioner Edwards for the twelve thousand dollars for the for the public library for the second by Commissioner Billings. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, and then for me the airport and I you know, talking to a little bit with, with the county manager. Thirty-five thousand dollars for the rooftop park. I threw that number because I wasn't too sure. But if you look in there on the Veterans Memorial Wall, you can see tiles that have been broken out of rocks and damaged. And uh, what some of the discussion that was taking place is, is to redo that. And talking to uh, somebody or a vendor uh, to replace those tiles with something more. And we've been talking about what was it, maybe marble or. 
Yes, it's not a permanent face rather than replacing it with a title. So Mr. Chiraz um, said he could create a, a type of monument to, to put in place of the titles that couldn't be destroyed with the rocks that are being thrown into the titles, shattering the titles. So shattering the titles. So right in between there by the veterans from more than one, I think we've come up with possibly would be no more than 28,000, right? Somewhere in there. So I would say that 30 would cover it. Probably 30 would cover it so they can uh, go in and look at it and, and uh, get it back up to, to parking that it is uh, the town of Morgan Park and we have that better as well. They're just a little very good right now. Are we sure that it's rocks that's damaging the tiles? And the reason I ask the question is because um, if people are shooting at it, um, would that damage the granite? I'm not an expert on granite. I don't know what a bullet would do to that. Um, it's probably possible that it would, but... Are we relatively certain? I mean, the picture I get is it shot at it with ricochet and cause all kinds of problems, and so maybe you wouldn't do that, but... Well, the way that it's located, it, um, we're... You're pretty certain that's wrong? We believe that's the cause, yes. Okay. Because it's... I don't think it's just in it. It might not just be rocks, but it's sitting there with things. Something like that pattern. Yeah. They're really nice size rocks that tend to coincide with the amount of damage. Well, and with it. granite, you could just replace it, right? With a chip or something to take it out of it? Depends. What's that? It, it would depend on the size of what was taken out. If right. you hit it with a hammer and you know, knocked off a chunk, you wouldn't be able to replace that. But you might be able to, you know. They do have a, a process where they can glue, you know, right. back on. Put some of that big stuff in. Exactly. If it was vandalism that destroyed that, and probably was when I was out there with a couple of veterans, um, our um, unqualified opinion was that it was more freezing ice and rain that did a lot of that damage, but it could have been that. It could have been a combination. We were out there on a cold winter day, and it seems to be like it's spots where it just looked like freezing cold and range. So I think any, as long as we're not putting the tile back, I'm really happy. I was in Lordsburg on Saturday and drove by their memorial. Um, I don't know how many of you have seen that, but it's really permanent with uh, bronze plaques and, and stuff. I'm, I'm sure that's very expensive. Um, but something that probably lasts a long time. Grant will too, obviously, and it's not. You know, hundreds, hundreds of years, potentially, if it's not defaced. Well, and I would guess that if kids had been throwing rocks out of them freezing and thawing, would it exacerbate that? Yeah, it might have been. Okay. So my one question about this now would be, uh, and apparently you're not worried about it, we're not sort of prejudicing a, a contracting process by having already somebody in mind who's given us a price estimate. No, sir. He was just kind enough to, um, to offer some potential solutions. He's aware of the problem and um, threw that out there. He was in conversation with Mayor Bausch and they talked about it and he said you could do this um, if you so choose, but no, we're not. Okay. And part of that, too, just so, you know, that was part of the discussion I had with with Charlene, what options do we have, what do we look at it? And I think it was a lot of just questions that, that they were asking us to, what would be better? I guess one last question would be, is it your opinion, and maybe this is Linda's question also, that this is appropriate as an operational expense rather than to come out of, uh, we're looking at some capital expenses for Baton Park for ADA. Does this make more sense to package with other capital expenses? Um, yes, Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Brown, yes, it would be because of the cost that is going to be involved and we'll have to include it as a capital. Okay, so I don't, I don't, not my intention to stall things, just to have this in the appropriate place in our budget. Um, so the manager is considering what to do with that. In other words, moving it from where it is now to somewhere else in the budget? Well, it's nowhere right now. It's yeah. a good goal. Yeah. I think all of us, maybe I'm just I'm projecting. I, I've been thinking all of these things are operational budget items. Other than, okay. And I'm wanting 
to clarify whether this one should be an operation committee. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, um, we can put in an entirely separate fund, but you do have a capital line item within your budget. We could um, include it there. Mm -hmm. All right. I can see that. So that would go from twenty two to roughly fifty two if we make it thirty thousand. I heard thirty. Oh, in the back and forth between the chair and the manager. I, I think that the thirty would, would it, or do we stay with the thirty-five just in case? And I mean, it can be transferred out of there, right? Yeah, if, if it's less. Right. So let's let's go for the thirty-five okay. just to have some room. If that's okay. Do you want to make that motion? So, I, yes, ma'am. So I'd like to make a motion that we put $35,000 into the capital outlay in the commissioner's fund for uh, to replace broken towns on uh, Veterans Memorial Wall and the Tron Park. Second. Uh, second by Commissioner Edwards. Discussion? Well, here's my piece. <laughs> I hadn't put anything here because my intention was to get, you know, uh, into salaries and that was done. So is it possible for me to ask for something here? Because it's similar to what Chairman Ponce is asking. Well, we guess we can go to you after we're... Right. We're done. We'll visit with you after Commissioner Ponce. Okay, it's fine. Well, I'm good. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Commissioner Bill. Aye. Well, something that's uh, always been a little bit dear to my heart is uh, uh, the DARE program and other general outreach programs from the Sheriff's Department and the police uh, involving the youth of the community. Um, I know that uh, my two younger children uh, were on a first name basis with <coughs> police officers, city police officers and sheriff's deputies. And I uh, felt really good about that. I hope that um, it helps uh, you realize that the police are our friends um, and uh, they help us, uh, help protect us from bad guys. Um, and so the, I talked to Sheriff Gomez uh, finally this morning and uh, he said that um, the outreach programs, including DARE, that the Sheriff's Department is involved in are about $45,000 annually. There is an anonymous uh, donor uh, here. They're uh, throwing in about $25,000 of that. So subtracting the difference, that leaves a $25,000 uh, difference. Uh, he expressed that it's um, there's some difficulty waiting to December for that because they're uh, ready to get uh, kicked off right now. In fact, he's in Red River uh, today with a dare of training. Uh, I talked to uh, uh, Officer Maldonado and uh, is it Corporal? Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Maldonado. He's uh, passionate about uh, dare to the training. So I, I propose this. Uh, Nothing said in stone. I'd like to actually hear what the other commissioners feel about it. Where is it currently? Apparently, you know, they're doing the program. It's in its own separate fund. Um, it's on page. Also, is it? It's on page 35. It's not really going to be it's on page 75 of the one that's on your list. It's on the big okay. entire fund. Do you have a budget for all funds? Yep. Yes. What's the number in there then? Um, the number in there that they spent um, last fiscal year total was $36,961. And um, they received a donation of uh, $26,240. And how much did you budget for this year? I didn't budget anything because we hadn't received any of the funds. Um, so I didn't. I would, um, what I typically do is do a budget increase once we receive that donation that they've been getting annually. 
All right, I'm close because I'm on page 75. But it might be a little different. Page 74. Page 74. Okay. Fund 603. There it is. I wonder, Commissioner Billings, if you'd be willing to wait until yeah. we can ask the sheriff what the needs are. I think so. Oh. So if the sheriff has immediate needs, those are going to be covered, right? Manager, what? Mr. Um, Billings, uh, Commissioner Billings? Yes. Right now, um, whatever shortfall I have right now, and if they're continuing, the program is coming out of the sheriff's, sheriff's regular overtime. So, um, just to let you know that we will be paying the overtime anyways, but it will be coming out of his regular overtime. So it's until we can get the whole project until um, we receive the funds, which usually comes in December and the economist down there. So. Oh, you're saying it comes out of that line on here? Yes. Right, right, right. But when we get the funding, then that line is restored. Got it. Correct. Okay. So we're not, not able to do the program because we're covering it. And so then in December, we could look at the shortfall and... Um, that is correct. It sounds like you've been doing that. Yes, we've been doing this for many years now. Okay. Yeah, I'll withdraw with that request. So we can hear from the sheriff more on later if there's a, if there's a, a need. So we'll wait till, on that one until we see what, what, how it goes along. Is that the next question? Yes, sir. Well, the the one that I, I wanted to do was also at the town park, but it coincides with what we're already going to do is the parking areas. So what I wanted to do was put in uh, fifteen thousand to extend the parking areas to the edge of the building, so that there would be more parking areas, because I really foresee that uh, we're going to have to have an exit. You know, an entrance and an exit, and the exit could be outside through those parking areas, which would involve a little expense. And since we're already going to have somebody in there, you know, I think 15000 would more than cover uh, the extension of that parking area. So, my, what I'm trying to look at here is, okay, so we, we or I shouldn't say, we, our county manager applied for for the community development block grant, correct? And with that, we're required for matching funds, correct? We have to match. How have we decided to do that match? And would this help this match or would it? Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, um, our match would be made with um, our um, engineering and architectural fees. So you need to remember that in addition to being able to just construct it, we have engineering and architectural fees. So that's where we're using as our cash match so that we would pay for that. Anything above that is considered leverage. It just um, basically helps your application and shows that you spent more money. Um, but we have to have our 10% match. Um, but anything above that is considered leverage, um, and it just shows that, you know, we're, we're putting more in than is required. That's just how they did re-engineer it. So you have cash plus um, any leverage funds. And what we applied for was in the amount of? 750000 um, I'd like to ask a clarifying question. So um, the the pot of money that we're discussing here in these different requests is the uh, adjusted ending cash balance, correct? And so um, uh, any, any changes to that dollar amount would come before us as a budget adjustment, correct? Um, you know, we'll make the motion on it right now. No, no, no. I mean, if, if, we don't future, pass if we don't pass anything, if, if there's money left in here, anything that would come out of that account in the future would be a come to us as a budget adjustment, right? That is correct. So I wonder if I might suggest that, um, that we uh, table your request mentally. It's not, that money is not going to go anywhere and see what the, because it's not going to help the CDBG have a 
application now, correct? Because it's been submitted. So the leverage will help that leverage, correct? It won't help the leverage, but as we make our reports, we'll just show that we spent more. But it's not going to gain us any more points um, on our application at this point because it's already been submitted. But we will be able to show that, but it's just a matter So I'm, I'm wondering if maybe it would make sense to sort of mentally save that $15,000 until the architectural and engineering is done and then look at what they've done and say, oh, we really want to spend this $15,000 right here. Because maybe that part will be included in the architectural and engineering. The, the, the only thing that I, I'm looking at is the, the CDBG grant is a wish. It's it's not a, a for sure. You know, so, so I, I know that, that I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that that, that comes to fruition, but it's it's not uh, something that, that is absolutely no one's going to get. So we will know by the end of August, is that right? I'm wrong. I thought it was August 17th, it's September 17th when the council needs to award. It's a so we could revisit this then if we don't get it okay. too. Because that, maybe fine. there's other things we our priorities might change if we don't get it. This the thought. Okay. No, no, you know, I, I I would agree with that. We're we're not looking at at a big time frame out there, you know. And if it becomes necessary we can we can do it. It's no problem. And, and for no other reason than I can't even, I can't even picture what you're talking about. I must have a better idea of what you're talking about. It's on the west side of the building. As a, where the entrance door is? You know, we're proposing putting four parking spaces there. Right. But what I'm proposing is to continue the parking spaces all the way to the edge of the building. Because I can see in the future that if anything comes that we need a, a, an exit point, it would be around to that side. Because the only other exit door we have is at the east end of the building. We're talking about the pavilion. Yes. Yeah. So it would just facilitate that, that happening. Plus, if you've never been to anywhere, you even go, there are a lot of people now with handicapped signatures. So um, that may also, so depending on exactly what you have in mind there, that might also be part of the discussion about whether it's going to be a driving park or a walking park, too. Yes, yes. So. Yeah, I'm not aware that you decided that it's going to be a driving park or no? Pretty much. That was a tentative decision. Oh, okay. That was, that was a tentative decision, but you, um, we'll bring this report back to you if we're successful with the ground, and then you can decide where you want concrete and if you want it locked versus um, you, just, you have a lot of decisions to make about that in the future. So you're going to go down just to see where we're headed with, with um, all this. We're not, with Commissioner Edward there too, yeah, we're not talking about a, a long period of time either, so, right. you know, hopefully. Well, that's when the money disappears. Well, hopefully that it'll be good news and, you know, become a good point. Mr. Chair, Mr. I wonder if I could uh, make a motion to approve Resolution R-1953, adopting the fiscal year 20 financial so final budget as amended uh, here at this meeting. Are we good or are we done with discussing all of our plans on the budget? That's what I'm wanting to find out. I'll, 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 I'll second that so that we so. can get to the discussion part. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Brown, second by Commissioner Edwards, and discussion. Well, <laughs> here's the point where I say, uh, you know, we have uh, $25,000 that we're going to be, is proposed to be given to the university for uh, economic development. I think, it's, I think that's where it's put. So I'm proposing to take that out of there. And if we are going to be doing some economic development, maybe to either put it into other areas or just to uh, put that into our cash reserves so we figure out exactly what we want. Because there's two areas that, that uh, I really want to deal with. You know, uh, I think that that our uh, IT department, you know, we have, I call it the Lone Ranger because we only have one person in there. And I think that's, uh, might present some good problems if that person is unavailable. And I, I know for right now, you know, that person really does adjust their, their life to be able to comply with what's needed. 
so it's the IT department, and then uh, uh, I was thinking about, when I was thinking about the 25 cent raise, I was thinking that was part of the money that we could use for that. But I think there's other, if it's purely for economic development, I think there's other areas that we could probably spend it better. And maybe that's on our uh, our, our trails, uh, even supporting uh, something local that's already happening that brings in a lot of uh, 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 people to our district. Or maybe it could be for something new that could be, you know, uh, to bring in people. Sporting events, uh, public events, you know, uh, stuff like that. So let me ask you a question. If we approve the budget with that money in there, it's not going to be paid out for a while, right? So down the road, there can be an adjustment when it comes time to change it to another line item or just not pay it because I have a feeling that that's probably going to work itself out eventually with certain things that are going on I'm not too sure what they are that's why I'm not speaking about them but I think that's going to work itself out eventually and it's going to go just back into the, the regular budget I don't think we'll have that payment maybe here soon I would suggest that maybe you just leave it in the budget um, and with very clear direction that we don't pay WNMU upon receipt of their um, invoice. You can leave it in there just because it's in that line doesn't mean it would prevent you from moving it to another line or creating a new line in the future. Um, we could leave it in there. Um, then I agree. I agree with you. I agree. Um, yeah, and if at some point in the time in the future you do choose to give it to the win and then it could be this direction to pay that in once. So, so if we go with the motion, so what I'm saying, we go with the motion, that's fine. It's not like the, the, the check's going to be cut tomorrow. We still have time to see where this is going to go and then to uh, come back down the road again. You can use it for, I mean, we're exploring. Um, possible um, planning grant monies for um, uh, outdoor recreation master plan, trails plan. Um, it's obviously going to come with some matching funds. I mean, you could use that for other things that you have talked about. Just make it very clear that we are not going to pay WNMU anymore for support of the golf course. Um, but you could leave the money in your budget. Or you could take it out and we could put it back in later for a specific purpose. It's, it's up to you. It's, I, I just feel it's, way. it'd be so much easier to take it out, put it in our cash reserves, and put it into where, where we need it at a later date. I'm sorry. Well, because the other place I was going to propose it, even into the IT, is it may be an increase into the IT director into her salary because I know for a fact that that, that she she schedules her even her time off to be able to to address problems here in the county. I'm up to three things. If I may have a turn. I guess going first with that question, I I don't think we as a commission should be uh, directing specific raises to specific people. I think that we have a manager to handle that and uh, if the manager uh, asks us for a budget increase for that purpose, then we can discuss it. But uh, I feel I feel uncomfortable singling somebody out and saying we're going to increase the budget so that person can get a raise. Uh, that just made me uncomfortable. Uh, item two is uh, I like your idea that this could be economic development funding. Um, I'm more inclined to support. Uh, eliminating this proposed purpose if we know we're going to use it for economic development in some way. Uh, I'd rather do that than just have it go into the general cash reserve at the end, cash carryover at the end, because it makes me feel that, okay, I've got everybody else's agreement that this is specifically for economic development. So that's on that one. And then uh, I was interested to see you feel like maybe we can go along with this motion uh, because previously you had basically swayed me as far as this year is concerned 
with the argument that we've made a commitment and I don't want the county to be the kind of body that backs out of commitments at the last minute. I have opposed this expenditure of funding for the past two years, but I have lost. And uh, so it's, I guess it's kind of strange that I'm suggesting that we not take it out, but I, I really don't want the county to be one that says we're going to do something and then we change at the last minute. Even when I don't want to do that thing that we said we were going to do because you know, our institutional reputation is important to me. So I'm reading into what you just told us that you're not concerned anymore about breaking that commitment. That's why I said it might work itself out. And I heard that. If you do get into it. <laughs> There's a lot of backstory here that I'm not aware of. It might just, <laughs> it, it just might, we might not have to face that. I, I agree with you. I don't think it's appropriate to, but I've also listened to uh, the conversation that we don't want to do this anymore. So that's not my decision to make that yours. Um, I'm just throwing out alternatives of you can choose to leave it or not. That's what your decision is. When does this payment normally mean? They don't, they don't send it at a specific time. There's no. I know it's been within the last seven months because we voted on it and that's how we had this discussion about it. So it was, what, maybe March, somewhere in there? March, April? I, don't know why. I think we paid it in April. I don't know why we would have voted on it. It was already well, it was a, it, it wasn't voted on it. was in the 10,000. Expenditure report. Yes. Right, right, right. So I want to say it was in the spring, um, but it usually doesn't, the invoice doesn't arrive at any specific time from what I can recall. Well, I don't want to fight that commitment either, but if it's our intention going forward to not pay this, probably need to let them know. Uh, step. I mean, that's next March. Maybe we can, maybe there's some flexibility to tell them, okay, we're going to pay X amount. I, I don't know. I, I think we could just, to me, I mean, the motion that was made, I think we just let it go for now. When it comes up in the expenditure report, if things haven't worked itself out, we can discuss that. But, you know, and, and I understand what you're saying as far as, you know, and, and I, I have to respect the decisions by other commissioners and that were here before us, but, you know, I, I would like to see a lot of money going into other areas of, of economic development also, you know, like in our trails or, or, or what we've been talking about, what we're trying to do with outdoor activities. So it's not that I'm trying to renege, I think, or, or say that the county doesn't keep their word. I think that that's $25,000 that, that can be used somewhere for for the entire county to be able to, to take part in. That's the way I look at it. But I, I, I think my opinion right now would be is, we go with the motion, we approve it, and when it hits us, if it hasn't worked itself out, then we can discuss it at that point. And the motion is to, to delete that from the budget. Right. I thought you made a motion to... No, Commissioner Salas's motion is the one that we're discussing. Uh, Commissioner Salas didn't make a motion. My bad. Yeah. So, yeah, so we have a motion right now. Uh, where, oh, thank um, you. Ms. Rochelle made a motion to um, go ahead and approve R 1953 as amended, and we have a second by Commissioner Edwards. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, I have some discussion on this item as well, and I think, um, you know, the last time we discussed this, we asked for some clarification about whether WNNU had to have this money in order to keep the golf course open. Uh, I don't have any idea what the backstory is that you're talking about, about it may work itself out or whatever, whatever. But um, I do think um, I would like to know if this money is uh, required in order to keep the golf course open. Um, we serve uh, approximately 30,000 people in this community, of which uh, Shirley, do you remember how many people use the golf course a day? I was shocked at how many people. So I asked Charlene uh, after the last time we talked about this, how many people use the golf course a day? And I was quite surprised at how high the number was. And I just want to remind us that, um, you know, we have different demographics in this community that uh, want to have different kinds of recreation opportunities. 
Uh, we have people that want to use the fairgrounds. We have people that want to use the town park. Uh, you know, there's lots of different kinds of things uh, that people want to do. And uh, I think it is unwise of us to uh, not invest in the golf course if not investing in the golf course would mean that WNMU is not able to keep it open. There is a demographic in this community that uses it, and it's part of the bigger package of amenities that we would consider as economic development in this community. I agree with you, and, and it's not, to me, nobody's convinced me or told me that without this $25,000 that the, the golf course won't stay away. Well, I golf, I want to family, golf. family golfs, you know, my, my son golfs a lot. I don't have a problem if, it, if it's $25,000 to keep it open because of the diverse uh, sporting and, and people that use the golf course, people have different basketball, baseball, softball. If I don't have a problem if it's to keep it open, I would probably take a step back and reconsider. So nice. But I have not heard that that is the case with this 25000 I think that I made that pretty clear, that we don't actually know, and I'd like to know. Right. I can pose the question to Dr. Shepard, um, but what you could do is you could... I mean, you have a motion a second on the floor, you can leave it alone. Um, whenever the invoice shows up, or depending on what Dr. Shepard says, it won't be paid until it comes before you, and you can decide which one you get. So, uh, so in order for me to, to do that, I would like to uh, invite Dr. Shepard to come and talk to us about why that's so important. Or his designee. Or his designee, somebody. Yeah. I would, I would support that 100%. But I think we should probably just leave it there and see what happens down the road. I'm good for that. Okay. Well, I can always, you know, bring that up again. But and to, to continue with the discussion, you know, uh, when we're talking about budget, we got a wish list from all the departments. And they gave specific things that they wanted. And included in that wish list was some... Uh, uh, salary increases. So I thought it was within our purview to grant them. That's why they gave it to us. You know, so that's why I thought it was within our purview to give them. Now I do have a problem with the uh, RIT department being one person. But the other thing is that I would like to, and I said it before, uh, establish some kind of a position that, that deals with our uh, economic development or, or parks and recreation or something and this is probably the appropriate time to to get that started that's where i meant you know twenty five thousand dollars that we give to the university would be better served by maybe putting that onto a salary that that we would give a person to uh develop something for the county as a whole so, so one thing I think is really important to, to remember in this conversation about budgeting is that we have to have revenue in order to, so in my opinion, the budget is the most important thing that we do. Because yes. then nothing happens in this county without the budget. And one of the things that I think we really have to remember is that we have to find a balance between revenue and expenses. And uh, when we talk about economic development, um, you know, there are, we have a very limited number of things that we can look at for revenue. Gross receipts, taxes, uh, property assessment, PILT, uh, copper production, forget more. A variety of fees. Fees, et cetera. But the main things are and so in terms of um, when we think about economic development, um, I, I think we have to think very carefully about the kinds of amenities that we have in this community that people want to come here for. And so um, I would just encourage us to think about the balance between those two things. If I could put Commissioner Salas' mind a little bit at ease, I, I'm in discussions with Angela about what is the best way to move forward with our department. I had a conversation with her this morning. We're in regular discussions about what does she need and what do we need to make sure that the IT needs are covered. And uh, as far as economic development, I just missed a meeting um, that I should have been at, but um, about... Uh, um, we're working on economic development from many different approaches, um, 
and they're looking at um, what type of organization this entire county and all the communities need. So all of those things are in the works, um, and whenever there is some sort of plan that's coming, a, a solid plan, um, it will come before you so you can make a decision whether you want to participate in that or not. But there are a lot of active discussions happening around that. So the, my last point would be, it doesn't matter if we approve this right now. Whatever we approve, it can always be amended. You know, if I wanted to, to make some kind of amendment to anything, I could just put it on the, on uh, for one of our agendas, right? As long as that expenditure hadn't already happened, should have been, you know, been committed. Right. Yeah. I think I think the town manager is very clear right. on what we want to do on this one, right? Right. You, you know, and I think too. I mean, not only is that. I think, uh, yeah. I mean, like you said, Commissioner Edwards, uh, this is probably one of the, our biggest responsibilities in, is the budget. So, you know, um, I, I think that you know, during this time frame from 2019-2020, we need to continue. We need to have continued information on updates and, and budgets and, and where we're at. But yeah, this is. To say it's set in stone, it is, but it's not. If there could be amendments made, and you can put um, certain things on the agenda that we can discuss. So it is. And, and maybe, <coughs> maybe it's to, to reference this, you know, to when we we have our goals set in place and, and directions that we want to take, you know, to make sure that whatever we really want comes to fruition and, and nothing is just set aside. Just because we we never addressed it, and so this is all part of that also. And it's basically like we, you know, the, the, the money for the professional uh, development, um, you know, for there, we, we're basically taking some of that for down the road, so we can discuss it. And we can we can discuss a lot of things down the road as far as that, because I think that professional development is probably one of our biggest things also. Any other discussion? So we have a motion to approve, or we have approve, this approved resolution, well, we have the approved resolution for R19-52, no, 53, I'm down here, approved resolution R-19-53, fiscal year 2020 final budget. As a As a discussion. As a as amended. Do we need to be clear about the amendments we made? What, what amendment? There was 12,000 additional for libraries, and there was uh, 35,000 additional for Baton Park uh, tiles. And also that the 25% raise will be taken out of the 350,000. But that was already passed. Uh, that doesn't have to be part of this. So with those amendments, correct? And but you're right, that was an amendment to the budget. <laughs> So any further discussion? We have a second, right? So any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Reporters. Commissioner Billings, you have any report? Uh, I have a question. Uh, there was uh, on the uh, regular meeting for um, next week, there were some items on the agenda, but now I can't pull that up. Is, are we going to talk about, uh, are there any items on that agenda? I guess I can do with the manager later. You're yeah. talking about the regular meeting or the work session? Either one. I can't pull either they're one. They're not in. They're yeah, they're not in. I know. But I was trying to figure out what you were, what well, you were remembering. A few days ago, they were, there was stuff in there. Bernadette's not here. You know, Kevin? Um, there, there are some things in the process, Commissioner. I mean, nothing solid yet. Okay. Yeah, so there's, it's still wide open. We have, we have no deadline yet that we reach that we can add. Okay, thanks. And, and we decided to make this both on the 8th. Am I remembering that correctly? We were, we were going to discuss that. To do a work right. session with the regular meeting because we were going to get a couple people to get a time. Well, I would be in, in press. Oh, she's not going. Well, my schedule fills up too quickly, so now I'm not going to be able to do that. Actually, I sort of stopped thinking about it when she said she wanted to. I can't now. I, I took it off my calendar and it's 
So, so then I will. So yes, I think we should have a combined meeting on the eighth if that works for everybody. By the way, I think today's a registration deadline, if I remember correctly. Okay. So, this is for the sake of So, what we want to do is uh, just go ahead and, and have the work session and the regular meeting on the eighth. Correct. Right? Nine a.m. If that's okay with others, that works great for me. Uh, okay with you. Would you mind if we took a look at the work session agenda first to make sure that we don't have any scheduled presentations for you on that work session? Of course. Or can we just notify you and make that decision? Yes. Let's decide right now. Let's do that. So maybe I have a report, Commissioner. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Thank you. And you have half an hour according to this. Commissioner Salas, Commissioner Report? No, I'm good. Commissioner Brown. I have none. Commissioner Edwards. And I have none. So we'll just wait for uh, before we move on. We'll at least see what happens for the eighth, correct? Okay. Okay. Where is it? Sorry, you know, the 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 you can go ahead and combine it. Um, the only person that was in it was uh, kind of tentative. He he worked with us, so it'll be okay. Thank you. So then, what we'll do, Kevin, I guess, is we'll have the, oh, on uh, August 8th, we'll have the work session at 9 a.m., and then to follow would be the regular meeting, August 8th, correct? Right? That, that, that would be great. Are you okay with it? Actually, we just combine it, and we do everything at once. So, that, I don't explain the agenda, we just go through it item by item. Right, I just wonder that, you know, my work session comes before our regular meetings. So. But uh, I think her point is that in this case, it doesn't. We, we consider it a joint work and regular session. But, okay. So we go around and try to That way people who want to know when to come for the regular meeting, they know 9 o'clock. I get you. All right. Thanks for yeah. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I'd like to second that. Any discussion? No discussion, no one in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.